Welcome back to uh, k &L Farms and we're just going to go over some of the stuff that I've been doing and I've got some tools in front of you and uh, I'm going to show you, I've got a lot of stuff to cover but uh, if you, you, don't, you, you can't follow me you ought to go back on my channel and figure out uh, and I'll show you here in a minute uh, what I'm up to uh, but uh, remember the concrete pour is destined to happen tomorrow and I'm going to walk over here and show you my failure because when I started the channel, I showed you my, I told you I would, I would show you my successes as well as my failures. But, and then we'll go over some of the tools I have for this project in front of uh, me, and how this, this table, uh, was created. But okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to walk around the table. If you go back on my channel, you'll see that this was a log. It was taken out for a uh, an area for a new building that I'm going to pour concrete for tomorrow, and this was a tree. Tree hit the ground, turned it into a log. Log went down to the sawmill. I have videos on my channel for the sawmill, and this turns into a six by six. Okay, six by six that came out of that log and and four by fours. Now I'm going to walk over and I'll show you. This six by six has been cut to length. And the problem I'm having is cutting this square, getting this end of this square with a skill saw. And when we go over tools, I'll show you that. But this six by six was a 10 footer. Started out 10 footer. I know it needs to be uh, seven foot four. And so this seven foot four. So that means that I cut a piece off this one and I cut a piece off of, uh, of that one over there. And that's actually the, a corner of the new building and this is going to be in the stream but that's a post for the new building and uh, this piece came off this was when I when I they call it uh, running wild I just cut the length logs that I could pick up with my tractor and move down the sawmill this used to be a 10 foot 3 so that means there's 3 foot left over so I needed a, a, a table just a makeshift table just to hold my tools. And so I took a, that corner post and then that other post that I roughed in. I took a piece of OSB that was left over from making the sawhorses, which is all on, the, on my channel. You can go back and, and find any of that. And so then I, I made a makeshift table out of the piece of scrap OSB and the three, or excuse me, the two remaining pieces off that one, that column, and that column over there and then I just made a makeshift table so before we get any further I'm going to quote uh, Norm from uh, this old house and the most important thing in any of this anything that you take from this is uh, safety glasses safety glasses which I'm not wearing currently because I was I was going to show you okay so safety, impact resistant glasses I sent a tinted sunglasses I use outside and you've seen them on the sawmill, a set of uh, clear glasses that you've seen me wear before. But uh, as the video goes on, I'm going to need to read because this is the book that I'm using because I am a total novel novice. I have never done this before in my life. I've never made a timber frame building, but I've always wanted to, and now I have enough time and enough material to, to make it. And I'm using this book right here to make it, but I can't read the print off this book with uh, a set of clear glasses, and definitely can't cut or do anything on the inside because I'm in the big shop off of a set of tinted glasses. So I have my reading glasses. My reading glasses are also impact resistant with a side shield on them. So I'm going to put those on so we can move forward. Okay, and then I'm going to go over some of this material that I'm using, some of these tools. Now I'm not sponsored and I'm not uh, uh, part of affiliation of any brand right now, but these are some of the tools that I'm using to make this these columns. Now you can probably see it's a chisel set that I bought, chisel set I bought, and the reason I bought the chisel set is because it came with a, a sharpening stone in the, in the set, sharpening stone, and it also came with an angle gauge, 
angle gauge so I can sharpen those correctly. I'm using, uh, with these, in lieu of taking a ball peen hammer and hitting on the end of that, which I've hit on the end of that, I've got a little mallet. I bought a little mallet, a little wooden mallet, for hitting that. Now, uh, you'll see, you've seen the book that I'm using. Uh, I've got an angle gauge. This is my, well, actually it was my dad's. Angle gauge to angle, and there's a lot of angles going to be involved in timber frame, which you'll see. Angle gauge, and then I think this was a machine square I got from a friend of mine. He's gone now, but I use angle, uh, uh, just a little one, and this is six inch, uh, and so this is this is convenient for me because it's not not great big. This is a bigger one. Standard, uh, standard framing square, which I haven't used that much because it, it's too big for the, the project I'm doing. But if I need to, I've got it here. Okay, and then you go back to a standard uh, speed square, which I don't, I don't know if I trust the speed square, but I, I have a speed square here and I've actually used it a couple times. Speed square, uh, tape measure, uh, whatever. 16 footer would work. This is a, I don't know if that's a 16 footer or not, but, but it's an old one metal case I've had for a, a long time, long, long time. And carpenter's uh, pencil, uh, which I don't like. I don't like the carpenter's pencil. I actually like this marker, magic marker. I like better. It's, it's truer and uh, the line is smaller. And then a couple of, uh, uh, just uh, standard uh, uh, saws, uh, hand saws. I don't like this one, too big. I prefer this one. And I got this one because it's still got a price tag on it. I got it at a garage sale and it was $2 for me, $2. And, and let's go back to, I'm not promoting that you buy any product that you see on the bench. You do what you need to do uh, and um, and don't just go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff and then make your tool cost greater than your building is is actually valued. But but uh, so most of the stuff I already owned from dis from standard uh, construction. Uh, and when I went to Post and Beam, I just uh, I just took all the the pieces that I have I own. I didn't go out and purchase anything, but I did purchase I did purchase for this project, this book, because I'm, I don't, I'm not a professional, first building I've ever been, first timber real building I've ever built. This book I purchased, and this, this uh, chisel set I purchased because I knew I needed a chisel set, and uh, I just, I just bought one, uh, and the reason I bought this one is it's got a stone, and it's got a, a sharpening angle on it. Okay, and then the other thing, uh, this is a standard uh, skill saw. This is a skill saw I bought, and I think this is a six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. I I didn't buy this for this project, but I, I own this previously. And I also use a worm drive. Worm drive in order to cut. But I had to reset this now. Let's 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 go. Let's go over this a little bit. Okay, so this worm drive that I own, I actually use for cutting ma masonry, cutting blocks, cutting concrete floors, and I repurpose it because it, but it's old. You, you probably can't buy this, this, this worm drive anymore. But a worm drive, and the only reason I use this worm drive is because this one, this skill saw will cut two inch and this skill saw will cut about uh, two and three quarters. But I had to take a square and I had to re-square this blade because part of the issues I was having with cutting the end, the length of it, was uh, it wasn't square. So I had to square this blade. Even though it says zero on the angle, I had to re-square that this blade in order for me to get a, a pretty good cut on that blade. Okay. So, 
Right now I'm running two skill saws, a hand planer, and this is a, and I'm going to show you here in a minute, a hand planer, and then I run a, a battery operated uh, jigsaw for an angle, and I don't know if I'm going to show you that, but later on in another video I'll show you that. And I will link on the description at the end of the video somewhere at the top, I will link how I got to own how I got to own this piece and this piece because neither one of these are actually store button. I made those on my homestead. And then uh, jigsaw, we got jigsaw, we got skill saws going, we got squares going. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can be able to be able to see it, but I'm gonna bring it into focus here pretty quick. This is the corner. This is going to be a corner, which this is seven foot four to the top, which you'll see the emphasis of that height later on. And then I cut and coped out a couple of spots with the chisel and that, that battery operator jigsaw I showed you. I cut some of this out. I cut this piece out for to take that. I'm going to set that back. I'm going to show you. What I call this, what I call a knee brace. This is a four by four knee brace that I, I made, and the reason is because this is the corner. This piece is going to fit in like that in a lighter day. Okay, so the this piece, this piece, and this piece, I took a hand joiner. Now I'm going to bring up. This has been cut, this six by six has been cut to length. Just sitting there. I'm gonna bring you a, a piece of four by four. <clears throat> so you can see it. This is a piece of rough cut four by four. And see that finish on there? I'm gonna show you that hand planer in just a minute. I'm gonna cut that, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. And then uh, I'll show you, cause I don't like that, I don't like that finish on that uh, so I'm gonna work on that a little bit just just clean that up a little bit and then I'll uh, another video I'll show you the finished product of that that and I, I don't know if you, you call it in the field this six by six so <clears throat> if that's a corner so say it comes over here that's a corner which it is and then a standard post, standard column going up, and then I, uh, and then standard column going going up, and then I put this in. This would be a standard column, and then this four by four will actually be the piece, the knee brace for it. But uh, that's all I have for today. I'll show you in a later video on the other portion of it.